hello everyone today we are going to take the first lecture of uh, prin principles of plant pathology course the main course objectives the main course objectives are focused on awakening you to the microbial world such as the microorganisms that cause disease or harmful to the plant as well as to know more about the biological control which uh, bacterial for example or fungi can uh, use to uh, compete or uh, control uh, plant diseases second thing that you know what are the plant diseases then what are the causal agents of plant diseases learn the biology of plant pathogens for example you can know what are the life cycle of the pathogens what are the environmental conditions are favorable to uh, the pathogen which can infect the disease on the other hand you will know also the environmental condition will increase the vigor of the plant to uh, defense or make uh, a defense mechanism against the pathogen next you know how to diagnose plant diseases in field the diagnose or lab diagnose during the main plant disease infect major crops, for example, vegetables or uh, orchards crops. Then understand strategies for disease control. Different strategies like uh, like uh, uh, exclusion, eradication, and uh, use uh, chemical or biological control in order to make integrated best management program to control plant diseases. The main objective of this lecture first thing that why we are studying plant diseases what is the importance of studying plant diseases the second thing what does the disease mean third thing what are the main symptoms and main signs and what is the meaning of symptoms and signs the fourth thing what are the what are the difference between symptoms and signs what are the causal agents which cause plant diseases the first thing, why we are studying plant disease? We st we studying plant disease as a, in historical uh, plant disease studying, we uh, find that plant disease, especially one specific disease, infected potato, is caused a famine in is caused a famine in Irish and kill and destroy all the potato crop subsequently the people cannot find any crop to eat because the main source of food for European people especially Irish people are potato so after their crop is uh, killed and disruption they cannot find any food to eat after that they starve it and they cannot find any source of food and then they start to immigrate to another areas and some of them are dead the reason of this famine was a plant disease caused light plight of potato which destroys the crop of potato the main causal agent of it it was a fungi called phytophthora infestans this fungi is destroyed the potato crop in this era and subsequently people cannot find any food so this is one of the most important topic or, or one, one of the most important uh, factor that we studying plant disease because if we didn't know anything about plant disease we will face uh, the same problem we cannot find the food we, can, we will face a problem uh, to start to cultivate our crop to eat so if the plant diseases are infected different crops and the crops are uh, killed or dead finally we cannot find any food so this, uh, studying plant disease is an important to know the factors or diseases that infect the plants in order to control them and have a healthy crop to eat food and can growing again another crops to establish our uh, agriculture sustainability system 
this slide showed that the uh, European people started from uh, Ireland and United Kingdom then the lower uh, European countries are face a problem due to infested potato crop with the late uh, plight potato disease and uh, as you have seen that the people didn't find any crop to eat and they started to harvest uh, they started to uh, to die to dead or didn't find any source of food to eat and they started to immigrate and the main cause of this problem was a disease a plant disease called the phytophthora infestans Nowadays in Europe, they make some statues to commemoration of this famine resulting from this disease. Recently and globally, we are focused now on the food security, which means that we need to produce more uh, production of crop production in the same area and have the maximized uh, yield of the crop production. On the other hand, we need to control plant pathogens as possible as we can to reduce the harmful or the loss of food due to these pathogens in order to gain a high quality and a high productivity of the foods to prov uh, provide or to, to provide people with uh, safe food as well as the biggest to avoid famines again and have sustainability food system to eat healthy food as Not possible as we can. world's population getting bigger, but it's getting older, wealthier, and diets are changing as well. If we continue consuming as we are today, we will need the equivalent of two planets Earth before 2040. If everyone lives like an average resident in the Western world, a total of up to four planets Earth would be needed to regenerate humanity's annual demand on nature. One third to half of globally produced food is wasted, an amount big enough to feed two billion people. While in developed regions, a significant share of this usually gets wasted on the end consumer side, in developing regions, Food waste occurs through poor infrastructure before it even reaches a consumer. Higher food demand will have to be realized with less available arable land, less water, fertilizers, chemicals, etc., and fewer emissions. Productivity gain of major commodities has slowed down to 1.4% per year. To meet rising demand, it should be at least 1.75%. The last 20 years, productivity growth for wheat decreased to 0.5% per annum. A similar trend holds true for rice, so the two most important staple crops in the world have had almost flat yield increases due to a lack of sufficient investments. We have entered an era of scarcity with higher and more volatile prices, and the battle for agri-commodities will only intensify. The economics of farming are not sound. Although prices are rising, farmers' margins have improved much less than prices of agri-commodities would suggest. Farmers get squeezed between highly consolidated upstream farm input suppliers seeking to maximize their returns and downstream customers seeking to capitalize on strong demand. Farmers cannot resolve the food security issues alone. This is a shared responsibility of global consumers, retailers, producers, traders, governments, academics, banks, and farmers. There is common ground between farming and cooperatives. Both are about the long term, about strengthening the community, about sowing today to harvest tomorrow, about a sustainable and self-sufficient future for us, our children, and theirs. Cooperatives help develop good farmers. Good farmers feed the future. Good farmers have the future.
To conclude why we are studying plant disease. We are studying plant disease for several reasons. Number one, plant diseases have a negative impact on our food. So we need to, we need to um, uh, reduce this, this negative inf uh, effect on our food in order to increase our crop production. Number two, plant preservation can be used as a bioterrorism weapon. Number three, plant disease epidemic can make a loss of food and starvation like famines what we are explained before and these famines will limit the food supply and we can face we can face a problem of shortage of food supply so we need to control it and study it at well to avoid all of these problems so what is the meaning of disease disease is a disturbance of the plant from plant pathogen or environmental condition that interfere with plant physiology or plant or plant functions subsequently the plant will appear or show different symptoms than the normal uh, than the normal view or the normal than the normal appearance of the healthy plant and the yield will be reduced this disturbance of uh, the disease uh, happened in different ways number one direct damage of the cells number two toxins could be released from the pathogen and uh, in, uh, These toxins have a negative impact on plant cell number three use of nutrition That the plant needed and the pathogen have taken it instead of the plant uh, number uh, four the uh, pathogen may interfere the genomic of plant like DNA or RNA cell and uh, make a disturbance in this machinery of uh, genomic system of the plant so finally the plant will be have an abnormal growth for example or uh, stunting of the growth the main function of the plant is number one photosynthesis number two respiration number three transpiration number four absorption of uh, water and minerals from uh, the soil so if one of these functions are malfunction, the plant is disturbed and disease is occurred. So when the disease is happened, the plant will start to show symptoms. So what is the meaning of symptoms? Symptoms is in the physical expression of a change in the appearance of function of the plant or any abnormal changes that happen than the normal appearance of the plant. Some examples of symptoms. Number one, blight. Blight is a sudden death of the foliar uh, part of the plant, like twigs, foliage, or flowers. Number two, cankers. Cankers is a death placed on bark or the stem of the plant. Number three, goals. Goals is an abnormal changing or abnormal growth of the root system, for example, or on the stem. Roots. Roots is a general decomposition and destruction of tissue or the fruit. Necrosis is general death of tissue, especially on limited area on the leaf. Spots, circular or irregular regions on above ground tissue, on the leaves, on the stems or any part of the foliar system of the plant. This slide shows some photos of the symptoms which we are explained in the previous slide before. For example, you can see on the left of the slide the, some spots on potato, and you can see uh, in the middle the wilt of the plant. Number uh, on the right of the top right of uh, the slide, you can see a leaf spot. Also, you can see apply it as a general leaf this in a short time on the uh, down right of the photo, and in the middle you can see some four spots, and in the uh, left bottom of the slide you can see some some seed discoloration on the plant it could be resulted on dead tissue like necrosis the second thing might happen on the plant if the disease is occurred is happen of signs rather than symptoms so what is the meaning of sign a sign is a visible presence or a physical evidence of the pathogen such you can see some part of the pathogen 
on the leaf for example or in the stem like the fruit bodies or the mycelia or any discharge association with the disease so the sign is a real physical evidence of the pathogen you can see on the infected part of the plant so you can know the pathogen which had infect the plant directly without guessing any kind of a causal agent some examples of signs number one mycelia you can see some gross mycelium on the uh, leaf uh, area so it could be a kind of uh, fungal uh, infection with uh, some famous uh, disease like uh, powder mildew or downy mildew the second thing you can see oses which a mass of juicy composed of uh, bacteria that exerted uh, in the infected part so we, we can see it famously when we cut or make a cross section in the stem of the infected uh, plant so we can see a kind of uh, mass of juicy compounds that released from the cross section number three pycnidia it's a uh, kind of uh, fruit uh, budding of the fungal which we can see in, uh, embedded in uh, the spots of uh, the plant which infected with some special uh, fungi number four rhizomorphous rhizomorphous is a string like strands of fungal mycelia sometimes found uh, on the bark of the tree and sli it's like generally like a thread so all of these uh, four main signs we can diagnose or know well the causal agent of the disease this slide shows some example of signs on the uh, top right of the slide you can see some white mycelium growth uh, caused by a uh, famous disease called powder mildew on the down right of the slide you can see some mycelium growth on the fruits of uh, a strawberry so it caused by a uh, fungi called uh, gray mold and on the left of the slide you can see some uh, gray uh, mycelium growth on uh, the grape so it caused by fungi called also gray mold so this is a sign of uh, infection and this sign is a physical uh, evidence or a part of the pathogen we can see directly on the infected plant so we know the causal agent which infects the plant directly without guessing any kind of uh, other causal agent this slide also show other kind of signs for example on the uh, top uh, left of the slide you can see also about the mildew and on the down uh, left of the photo you can see a kind of uh, small brown area on the leaf surface it's called a rust this is a rust disease and on the right uh, area of the slide you can see some also uh, yellow pustules it's also uh, caused by rust disease this slide also shows some kind of kind of sign but the most uh, special kind of sign we have uh, mentioned before on the left uh, down of the slide you can see when we make a cross section in the stem of the infected plant you can see some kind of strains the strains or uh, caused by juicy mass of uh, bacterial growth it's called O's this is one of the most important signs to know uh, the infected plant is infected with bacterial disease and the others uh, photos in the slide are a kind of uh, uh, mycelial growth with different uh, fungi so it caused by a fungi disease so we now know that the, the most infected plant in this slide are infected by fungi without any uh, hesitation and the uh, only uh, left bottom uh, uh, sh uh, photo shows that we uh, have a bacterial disease plant disease can be caused by either non-living organisms it, it means abiotic agent like uh, environmental factor or living organism it calls it called biotic agent like fungi or bacteria or fungus the plant disease can group uh, by different categories for example we can group it uh, by the causal agent to uh, group the causal agent of uh, diseases by fungi the causal agent diseases of bacteria or viral or something like that 
we can divide it in another way with plant part affected so we may group the plant diseases on the root diseases or seedling diseases or the foliar diseases another type of group we can group the diseases by the symptoms so we can group symptoms of damping of diseases or leaf spot diseases or blight diseases so we have different group of uh, disease based on the causal agent or the part of the plant or the type of symptoms as we mentioned before that the disease plant is caused by two main factors number one living factor they are a bio biotic agent biotic agent are infectious they can spread from plant to plant it, it includes uh, pathogens like fungi, nematode, bacteria, virus, and others. The second factor are non-living factors, which are called abiotic factors. It doesn't spread from plant to plant. They are restricted just on the infected plant also without spreading, caused by chemical or physical or mechanical factor, include nutrient uh, deficiency and water and temperature, this is all related with environmental condition. So, the non-living factors related with uh, environmental conditions and cannot spread from plant to plant. On the other hand, the living factor are related with uh, pathogens like fungi or nematode or bacteria and can spread from plant to another plant. The first group of biotic agent, which more common is fungi, bacteria, virus, nematode, and sometimes have other uh, pathogens or causal agents like viroid, parasitic plants, phytoplasma, or protozoa. So we will discuss in the next slides some of these examples. So the definition of fungi or fungus. Fungi or fungus are an organism with no chlorophyll, so they cannot produce their own food. So they must parasite on the plant with different ways. Then they reproduce by means of a structure called spores, as we have seen on the top uh, right of the photo uh, of the slide and they are usually have a filamentous cross and uh, for example we can see it uh, uh, in several ways like mushroom or yeast or mold this slide showed the main structure of the body of fungi as you see that fungi the main structure is a thread and uh, this is thread is divided to, uh, to a lot of cells. This, uh, these cells are divided by septate. So we can find septa which divide cell to another one. And generally the fungi can cross starting from the tip of these uh, threads. Bacterium is a microscopic organism. As you have seen in this slide, it's a single cell with, with a cell wall and there is no chlorophyll produced and they are produced through the cell fashion. Virus. The virus is a sub-microscopic agent, subcellular particle that require a host cell in which to multiply and that means that the plant virus cannot reproduce in dead tissue. It must be multiplied and reproduced in living cell. It's not known if a virus is a living or non-living agent because virus didn't have a cell structure it composed from uh, two components number one a uh, uh, code protein and number two is a nucleic acid nucleic acid it could be dna or rna so there is no uh, cell live uh, structure so we cannot uh, know that the virus is a living or non-living agent Nematode, we are classified nematode under Animalia Kingdom. Nematode is a microscopic, non-segmented round worm, usually living in the soil, which feed on plant roots and foliage, but mainly feed on plant roots, make a disease called root knot nematode disease. The groups of plant pathogenic parasitic plant. Number one, dodder. Dodder is a parasitic plant which produce an orange or yellow thread fine strands that uh, wind, wind on the stem of the plant and absorb the nutrient through tube-like structure this structure called historia and uh, through the tissues do they produce abundant number of seeds which can ensure to reproduce again through this kind of seeds 
The second parasitic plant is called prom ribs. Prom ribs are attack the root system of the dicotyledon crops. For example, uh, faba bean or common bean, and they absorb the water and the nutrient from from the root system through historia, as we mentioned before, like uh, the dodder, and they also reproduce by uh, make seeds, and these seeds are spread to reproduce it again and infect another plants from different area in the next seasons.